Dynasty. One of the reasons I think Kawasaki hasn't tampered with that ultra hull is because they know they've got such a sweet setup. And I think Yamaha's kind of landed there with the redesigned FX for 22, I think, uh, 22 onwards. I think that whole shape's pretty good. I still think there's a bit of room to wriggle with ride plates and sponsons, which kind of leaves us to Sidu's ST3. I think the only thing stopping that ST3 from being a world beater is that hull. And so maybe if the next uh, ST3 or the successor to ST3 could somehow take a bit of the RXP love, um, maybe we'll eventually end up with three really good hulls instead of two really good hulls and one that's a bit compromised but has a great top deck. What do you What are your thoughts okay. on that? I I think I think you and I are being a little unfair to ST three because we are we are evaluating ST three in one in chop. Yeah, that's fair. In, yeah, in one little section. That's fair. And, and it's On also the, it's yeah. also the least yeah le- it's the least prioritized yeah. section in Sidu's view and let me let me explain That's fair. yeah so yeah they're not focused Kawasaki's on Kawasaki's hull Kawasaki's ultra hull and Kawasaki's STX hull the STX has not changed since 03 yeah all right yeah. why yeah. because the STX hull and as the STX R1200 won more championships in the closed course than any other runabout. Okay, so they go, we did it, boys. Leave it yeah. alone. And with the Ultra, all they've done is do some reinforcement here, a little bit of weight distribution here, a little bit of stringers. Now the, now the new 22s and up have reinforcement down at the bottom. It's a little bit more sturdy. And a, a big portion of that goes towards how Kawasaki dropped the center of gravity three inches. They dropped the rider three inches. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that that changed a lot of how that hull behaves. Yeah, Yamaha it a little better. Yeah, yeah. Yamaha, they knew they had something with the v, the 2015 VX and then VX VXR mm-hmm. GP yeah. that yeah. hull. They went, oh, yeah, God, something special here, yeah. Because hey, listen, uh, with a ninety horsepower TR one, with a HO one eighty horse, or with a five hundred horsepower fully tilt one point eight, that hull poof, is is killer. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, I tell people who are tourists who are going to go buy a new ski. Hey, maybe the GPR is not for you. Well, why not? I'm like, eh, it's a little more of a hot rod. Oh, I, I love it. I'm like, you're going to feel everything. And then yeah. a month later, like, I freaking hate this thing. It's rough and it's wet. And I'm like, you bought a Shelby Cobra. What the hell's wrong with you? That's it. So it, it, it's tough because for what the 1800R is and then what the 1800HO is, they're great but you have to respect them for what they are. And um, the FX, it's funny because the FX, I really liked it when it came out, but I knew it had problems. And then, you know, Yamaha was actively engaged in trying to get the nose up and trying to get, how do we make it fast? How do we get this into, and they figured out, oh, hey, listen, we need to move the sponsors up three inches. We need to change the intake rate. We need to change the pitch of the ride plate. They yeah. still have impel- – the, the Achilles heel of all SVHO skis is the impeller pitch. That's yeah. why they cavitate like a mother. It's just doing yeah. burnouts. Yeah, And everyone's like, well, how do I fix – what do I do? I need more power. I need to change the tuner. It's like mm. chances are your impeller pitch is wrong for the combination you got or you're bouncing off the rev limiter because that's yeah. why you have cavitation. And they go, huh? I'm like, no. <laughs> There's your answer. So with, with that – with that said, and I actually do take your point, it's a fair one to raise about ST3. I guess I'm overly focused well, well, on because of the rough riding we do, whereas let's you're right. About S- let's talk about ST3. ST3 I, is unbeatable, yeah. I apologize. I, I, I talked about Cowie and Yamaha. I didn't talk about ST3. No, no you're good. Here, here's the problem. Ya- sidu has got a absolutely thankless job when it comes to 
you must make one hull yeah, to do all these things. Yeah. To do all yeah. of it. It has to yeah. be a GTX. It has to be an Explorer Pro. It has to be a Fish Pro. It has to be a Wake Pro. It has to be an RXTX. It has yeah. to be a blanket. It has to be a Gator Pro. It has to be a Moose Pro. It has to be all these different skis. And so it, it has an impossible job. And the funny thing about it is that the RXTX on flat water is faster than the RXPX because it's flatter. Yeah. Yeah. And true. when you're up, when you're up on the tail and you're trimmed all the way up and you've got, you know, a, 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 a Riva kit or a Green Hulk build or a JP build, that ski is going just, rah, just, just screaming. <laughs> all right. And if you're a fisherman, and you want to stand two feet in the footwell and you're on a trophy, dude, I love the trophy and I'm not a fisherman. Yeah. I love the trophy. It's the sweet spot in that range. I reckon I think oh, the, 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 the fish perfect. pro sport and Explorer pro. I, I reckon that trophy is a sweet spot because, and I know you love that windscreen, but <laughs> you can uh, actually now fit that windshield kit to other ST3. Oh so, yeah. And I knew yeah. that. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out. This clip was taken from our weekly podcast that we record here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to watch the whole video, you can go to the Watercraft Journal's YouTube channel, go to Playlists, and then click on Live Sessions. You're going to see it there. Otherwise, go ahead and leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. And again, thanks again for watching our videos, and we hope to see you soon.